Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can listen to smart contract events on the Ethereum blockchain um, with the Web3.js library, which is, you know, the main JavaScript library for interacting with the Ethereum blockchain. And I'm going to walk you through step by step how you can, you know, start listening to smart contract events in this video. So, you know, this video is part of a, a larger series, and this particular video is not necessary that you watch the other videos in order to follow along, but it would sure help. So check out the previous videos in this series if you haven't already, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for the next video when it comes out. All right, so we're talking about, you know, smart contract events. So if you're unfamiliar, um, you know, smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain um, can emit events. And essentially what that means is they can um, emit a signal um, that says that something happened inside the smart contract and it can broadcast that event to the entire network and a consumer can you know, subscribe to that event um, to find out that something happened with the smart contract. And we're going to look at you know, an event today that is uh, part of the ERC-20 token standard and if you're unfamiliar with ERC-20, you know, this is just a standard for how uh, tokens are built on the Ethereum uh, platform. And I talk about that more in the previous video, so you can check those out if you haven't already. So here I am on the uh, uh, ERC-20 uh, Ethereum, Ethereum Improvement Proposal page on GitHub. And the event that we're going to be listening for today and looking at is this uh, transfer event which you can see here. So this is a, you know, an event that's part of the ERC-20 standard. Um, this is the Solidity source code for uh, the interface that this event should implement. So essentially, this is you know, the event keyword in Solidity, and this is the uh, uh, tr name of the event, which is called transfer, and it accepts a few arguments. The first argument is an address. Um, this is you know, the account that uh, sent the transaction when they're transferring tokens. And this is the uh, address that uh, they're sending tokens to. And this is the number of tokens that they are uh, sending. So what we're gonna do is actually uh, pull up an ERC-20 token on the main Ethereum blockchain, the main network. And we're going to get these transfer events from the token. And we're gonna see uh, you know, some of the past events that have actually been triggered uh, by a smart contract with Web3 on the Ethereum blockchain. So we're going to do that um, with this um, with Web3, this library, um, with this event stream. Uh, we're going to get you know the past events for the smart contract. This is the uh, this is the source uh, sorry the documentation that we'll be referencing um, to do that. And we'll go to uh, Etherscan to actually find the address of an ERC-20 token that we want to listen to. So let's go ahead and get set up. You know, I've got a little sandbox here that I've been using for the other videos in this uh, series. I basically just have an app.js file. And um, I'm going to be running this script uh, with Node in my terminal here. And we need just a few things to kind of get us started. Um, first, make sure you know you have Node installed. You can just check that out by uh, typing Node-V, and you want to make sure that you have the uh, Web3 library installed. And you can do that like this: pm install uh, Web3. Okay. So once you've got those steps completed, um, we'll go to this you know, script file, and I'm gonna paste in um, some boilerplate code that we've been using to get us started. Um, essentially what this does is it's going to require the Web3 library that we installed, and then we're going to actually create an instance of Web3 uh, and pass it in a, a URL to a remote Ethereum node. And I show you how to get started uh, with this link in my previous videos. You can check those out if you haven't already. Uh, for a basic explanation, basically you can go to infura.io and register and get a, an RPC URL uh, for uh, a node. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And this is connected to the main network. So 
we want to do is, um, you know, first of all, get a connection to a smart contract on the blockchain. We actually want to get uh, a JavaScript representation of a smart contract. We want to say uh, contract. And this is going to be you know, web3.eth.contract. And we're going to pass it an ABI. And we're going to pass it um, an address. Okay. And you can check the previous videos. We do this a couple of other times. Um, basically, this is using the uh, contract part of Web3 to uh, you know, build a contract that we can talk to on the blockchain. And uh, this gives us a JavaScript representation of it that we can call some methods on. So we need to define an ABI. Let's do this. And we'll paste the ABI here. Let me just do that for now. Actually, this is going to be an array. And we'll say const uh, address. It's going to be a string. So let's fill these in. So we want to get an ABI uh, for the contract. This is just going to be a JSON representation on, like, of everything that the contract kind of responds to and uh, things like that. And then the address is going to be uh, the location of the actual contract on the network. So let's go back to Etherscan to get those values. And um, earlier in this tutorial, we were using the uh, OMG token. We were using... Uh, the source code, not source code actually, the ABI and the address from this. So we can you know, search for OMG and click on the contract. And we will look at the, uh, well, first of all, let's get the address. Copy this. Make sure you're on the main network, not a, a test network. And paste this in. And next, I'm going to get the ABI. Put this in the code tab. All right, so let's copy this. Go back to our file here. We'll paste that in. All right, now let's uh, let's just try to run this. Console log uh, contract. Sorry, I got a typo. All right, so let's minimize this and. Say, I'm going to run this script like this, node app.js. Well, just as a reference, you don't have to include the file extension. We can just do node.app. All right, so I have an um, error here. I need to actually type new. It's my fault. All right. So we can see uh, I console logged uh, this you know contract that's represented by Web3. Um, it basically destructures the uh, ABI and, you know, organizes it in a fashion that uh, you know, can be useful for Web3. All right. So now what we want to do is actually uh, get some events from this contract. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's go back to Etherscan really fast and uh, look at this. If you look at uh, these transactions, you can see... There's a lot of pending transactions. Um, we let's look here, token transfers. Actually, let's go to events, all right? And you can see uh, this event stream here. We can see event log, transfer, 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 transfer. And this is exactly the kind of thing that we want to read with Web3.js. Um, we want to get a list of these uh, events. So I'll show you how to do that. Actually, let's go look at uh, the documentation here. So what we're going to do is use the contract that we've instantiated, and we're going to call this function uh, get past events. And we can pass in the event name and some options and a callback function that's going to actually return uh, the value uh, that we want here. And we can see the uh, parameters. This can be uh, the name of the event or we can listen to all of the events. Yeah, we'll, we'll kind of just play around with these and I'll show you what they do. So we'll clear this out and we'll do just like what the documentation said. We'll do uh, contract and we'll say get past events and we'll say all events 
Oops. All right. And we'll say, these are the options. So we can do from block and we can pass it to block. All right. Now, and then we'll, then we'll pass the callback function. This will take an error and an event. So will be, so I'm gonna organize this a little bit so you can read it better. I'm actually gonna bump up the code. Uh, let's do it like this. This might be a little verbose, but hopefully it'll be a little more readable. All right. And I'll say console.log, and let's just say the events, let's do the count. So what we can do is say from block zero to block latest, all right? So I'll, let me explain what that would do. This is gonna listen to any event that's triggered by the smart contract. You know, we, we said we wanted to actually look for the transfer event, but this will include the transfer event and any other events that the token uh, might emit. And this is sort of like the range in the chain that we actually want to listen to. So, you know, with uh, the Ethereum blockchain, you have block numbers. Um, you know, so, so basically like anytime uh, a token is transferred and this, you know, transfer event is triggered, right? This transfer event gets triggered inside uh, the transfer function, right? Some tokens are being moved from one address to another. Um, you know, transactions being written and that transaction is getting stored inside of a block. You know, that's what you know, blocks are. They're bundles of transactions on the blockchain. Those are the you know blocks that get chained together to make the blockchain. And you know these blocks have numbers, right? See these numbers right here in the column block. Um, this is either the block number or the block height. I think that's actually the same thing. It might be subtly different. So like block zero uh, would be the first block, be the genesis block, and then this number here. Um, let's see one two three one two three. Uh, I'll say one two three. Yeah, 5,854,812. Um, this, this, you know, this is the block number all the way from zero, zero base index up to this. So let's specify um, a block to start listening at because if we started you know, from zero, it's gonna be huge. There's gonna be a lot of events come back. So we don't wanna do that. So let's actually specify you know, let's kind of look here. Uh, let's just copy this. And let's paste it in here. And if you're watching this video later, this number is going to be much higher for you probably. Um, so let's just like say, let's just start a, let's just start there. Yeah. Yeah, let's we'll zero this out a little bit. We'll start a little ways back, but not too far back. So I'm actually gonna log this and I'm just gonna see how many events uh, in all events that were um, streamed. So let's say node app. All right, so undefined. Let's just see what happened. Oh, I made a mistake here. Oh, it doesn't know count, sorry. Sorry, I know too many programming languages. Sometimes I forget which, uh, uh, you know, what I can do on in each language. <laughs> um, so yeah, 152 events were triggered, you know, in this range. So we could, you know, start here, turn these into zeros, see what happens. It's gonna be much higher. It might even blow up on us. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's not do that. All right, we can... We'll see this is a two. All right, so 623 events in that range. Um, so let's bump this back up to, I don't know, I'm just kind of throwing some arbitrary numbers in here. Um, so let's actually do, let's actually look at some of the events, so zero. I think I went too high. Yeah, I went past the actual, yeah, I went past the number, sorry. Sorry guys, I'm just playing around here. <laughs> Let's go back and take a look. 
at what EtherScan actually says. Uh, sorry. I think I also forgot a zero. All right, so now we've got uh, you know a sensible length here. This is 152 events. So let's actually log the events. All right, so we can see the stream that came out here. This is uh, you know all the events that were in that log. Let's just like copy the last one. Um, let's just log the last one. Say events. How many was it? 152, all right, so let's do 151. All right, so let's copy this value. And let's, uh, I'm just gonna paste it in here so we can take a look. All right, so this is what, you know, the uh, event looks like in the stream. This is what a single event looks like. It's got some information here, some data. So we can see the address, um, and we can see the block number, right? This was kind of in that range that we specified. This is the transaction hash of the actual transaction that was written in the blockchain. Um, this is the index, I believe, of the transaction within the block. So this would be index number 49. Um, this is the block hash. This is the uh, you know actual hash that corresponds to this block number. Um, the log index, removed, false, ID. Um, so these are the values, all right? Let's kind of talk about these for a second. So from, to, and value, these are the actual values that were passed in to the event that we saw on um, uh, this GitHub page for the transfer event. We see the three arguments, two, um, oh, sorry, this is the transfer function, transfer event uh, from, to, and value. And we see that here as from, to, and value. This is who sent it, this is who received it, and this is how many uh, tokens. That's a lot. So uh, this is the name of the event and the signature. And this is all the raw data. And if you've watched uh, my other uh, tutorials about how to use raw data, this is an example. So yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's a really good example of what the event looks like. And this is all data that you could use. Um, so reason this day is important is if you're building a decentralized application, you're, you know, you're working with transactions and, and events, you could build something like this on Etherscan, where you have a list of all the transactions um, here. I mean, it's more accurately, you could build something like this, or you could build a page that shows all of the uh, events that were streamed from the smart contract. Now, what we can do is... Um, actually let's see we'll see length let's filter this and let's say uh let's actually change the name so instead of listening to the transfer event let's first see how many we have node app 153 events uh let's say just transfer only all right so there's 151 that were um uh, transfer out of 153. So that means that two others were a different kind. Go back to our ERC20 standard. We can see that there's uh, you know an approval event. This is uh, the event that gets triggered when you know an approved transfer happens, like on a cryptocurrency exchange. All right, so that's it, guys. That's how you use um, you know the event stream of a smart contract with the Web3.js library to see all of the you know events that happen um, inside of a smart contract. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos in the playlist where I show you, you know, kind of how to use Web3 in detail, step by step. And until the next video comes out, thanks for watching DAP University. Mm -hmm.